YouTube channel, $900 Luxury Yacht. Today's episode, Preparing for a Tropical Storm. I'm looking at the radar image on my phone. To the left is Florida. The dark black is the land and the gray is the water and the green is clouds and rain. And you can see off to the right, there's a lot of clouds and rain. And that is actually a tropical storm that is expected to hit South Florida tonight. I can't see further off to the right because radar coverage seems to end there. Apparently, Bahama radar is already offline from the storm. So I'm going to look at the satellite images, Caribbean, and here Florida is at the upper left. And that green area and sort of yellow orange just off to the right of Florida is the tropical storm. And you can see there are some much larger storms down south. Um, there's actually a hurricane breaking up over the Yucatan at the moment. And these other potential tropical storms down south. So this is the way the boat is at the moment. And this is the weather, the typical thunderstorms over the mainland where the heat of the land causes convection. But to the east, looking out at the Bahamas, it doesn't look that threatening. There is a certain probability that sometime tonight a tropical storm is going to come through here and I'm just looking at the boat and I see I, I do have two sets of fenders and two sets of dock lines and I just leave them tied on and whatever side of the boat is towards the dock when I pull up I've got fenders there and I've got dock lines to throw out. But since I'm preparing for a tropical storm, I'm gonna move all of this docking hardware over to the side of the boat that's up against the dock at the moment. So I'll double up the number of fenders. I'm pushing the boat out from the dock so I can get the fender between the boat and the dock so that I know at what point in the line to tie it on. I don't want the fender tied so high that it doesn't get between the boat and the dock or so low that it's just in the water. So I'm going to have to find some way to get to that one. There is another one forward that's easier to get to. So I think I'll untie this one next. And I'll just cut forward to after I've undone all the knots. Oh, picking up the fender, and I'll carry it across the boat and then onto the dock and tie it to the side of the boat while I'm standing on the dock. It's just easier and a little bit more secure footing than tying it from the boat and tossing it over. I still have to get it in between the boat and the dock anyway. So where to tie it? There'll be another one after this that I guess I'll tie further towards the back. But at the moment, I guess I'll put this one up here. I have these Velcro straps that 
I sometimes use to attach lanterns like that one to the bimini tops and they're also used when I take the bimini tops down to wrap them up like this. Once the tops are down in a high wind they can the canvas can still flap around a lot so I like to take these velcro straps and wrap the canvas around the frame a bit and then wrap the velcro strap around that to keep them furled in tight so that the wind can't get you know a little bit of the canvas loose and have it start flapping where it can damage itself or damage something else that's nearby Later in the season, I actually had the forward bimini top destroyed by high winds. So tying them down like this is no joke. This is a sun shower. You fill it with water and set it in the sun and then you can have a warm shower instead of a cold one. And I'm just getting it out of the way because what I really want are these rocker stoppers. And the main reason I want them is because there's a heavy weight in the bottom. And I just want to use it to hold this tarp down on the driver's seat so that the wind doesn't flip the tarp up. Uh, the tarp is covering all my instruments at the moment. There's a little section of rope attached to the rocker stoppers, so I'm going to use that to tie the tarp to the railing. Again, to keep the wind from flipping the tarp up and letting rain flood my instruments. I've been having enough problems with them without having rain get into them. So this is where I keep a lot of the tools and things that I might want to get to in a hurry. There's more underneath the V-berth, but tools that I might use frequently I keep in that little lock. And what I got is a bag of zip ties. And this isn't how I would normally cover the instruments or tie this down but the zip ties are convenient. I, I want to tie this extra well today. Tropical storms can have winds, well, I mean, up until they become a hurricane. And I, I think hurricane force starts about 70 miles an hour. So, you know, we could have 60, 65 mile an hour winds tonight which is why I'm doing a, a securing everything as best I can. Oh, this is a nice little trick with zip ties. You see, one isn't long enough to go around here. So I just use two. The second zip tie gets zipped into the buckle of the first. and then the first gets zipped into the buckle of the second. And so then I have a zip tie twice as long. And I just use them to tie off this tarp every place that there seems to be a good spot to tie it off at the edges. And I've also got two sets of dock lines on the boat. So what I'm doing now is just 
taking the set of dock lines off of the far side of the boat and putting them on the dock side. When I do this, I'm going to make sure that I don't tie the line to the same spot as the existing one. Here the existing one is tied to the solar panel rack, the leg for it, and so this new one I'll attach to the cleat, which is closer to the solar panel leg than I would like, but at least it's a different attachment point. If the cleat is pulled out of the deck, the solar panel leg will probably hold. And now that I've got the bimini tops down, I have to kind of crawl under and over to get past them. I'm retrieving the other dock line. There's a loop in the end of the line that goes through the loop in the cleat and then over the horns. So here's the second dock line. Through the loop in the cleat, and then over the horns, and then pull back. And this is the boat in the evening. It's got all the fenders on one side, all the dock lines on one side, and I'm hopefully prepared for the tropical storm tonight. This is a little bit later in the night, and I've come out and retied the lines. There was enough extra rope in each dock line that each dock line is now attached to two cleats. So in case a cleat pulls out of the dock or the horns pull break off of the cleat each dock line is on two cleats I've seen both of those things happen here and this other boat is going to stay here through the night as well later in the evening this other boat came into the harbor and this is all taken with the Sony A7S. So it's even darker than it looks here. It's, it's still clear, but there is no moon up. So it's just actually here, a clear night is darker than a cloudy one. A cloudy night will reflect more of the city light back down here onto the island but a clear sky just lets all that light out there's some clouds there at the horizon but mostly the sky is still clear this guy i talked to him later on and he said that he didn't know about the tropical storm and he was anchored in the bay a bit further down. And the more time went on in the night, the rougher the bay got. And it was impossible for him to sleep with the boat rocking so much. So he came down here to Boca Chica to come into the little harbor. And he's very cautious about driving here because again it, it's a lot darker than it looks here it is just pitch black and he had to get close enough that his navigation lights are reflecting off of the seawall before he can even tell where the wall is so while he was tying up his boat this other boat came into the harbor. Apparently the same deal. They had gone out without checking the weather and found that 
conditions had been getting worse and worse as the night progressed, so they decided to come into the harbor even though they had to drive in the dark to do it. And it's still a very clear night. Stars for the most part, not the clouds. And this is the next morning. All the lines tied to two cleats for each line. All the fenders on one side of the bow. And, well, not a whole lot happened. I suppose it would have been uncomfortable at anchor in the bay, which was why other boats came into the harbor, but nothing severe happened here. Although later in the day, I met some customs and border patrol agents that had run across to the Bahamas this morning. And they found the seas were still quite rough over there. And the tropical storm had missed us here, but had run through the Bahamas pretty severely. And in another week, I'm going to be running at night myself away from a hurricane. So check out these other videos from my channel and subscribe and ring the little bell to be notified when another video is put online.